Alrighty, welcome back to Bio Boost with Mr. Marinelli, where we boost your bio. Um, this one is going to be maybe slightly longer than the last couple, and I'll try and get through it as quick as I can. Um, but from the outset, what I want to um, get through to everyone is that what I'm doing now uh, is really just a summary video of one of Andrew Douch one of his videos online okay so all the pictures that you see i've taken from youtube from his video and it goes for about half an hour and it goes in depth and it's a much better video than the one i'm going to make okay mine's going to be a lot more um, simplified and hopefully just go through the process quicker so maybe you can fit it in a bit easier with your schedule but if you're a top student or you want to be a top student um, i would really recommend um, going and watching his video in fact, you could even probably stop watching now and just go and watch his, um, but maybe I'll explain it in a way that makes sense to you as well. So um, it's probably beneficial to watch both, but I'll just say from the outset that a lot of things I'm going to be saying and a lot of the, well, all the pictures I'm going to be using are straight from his stuff, okay? So um, he's got some really good things. Okay, so let's start at the beginning. So we're looking at plasmid recombination. So plasmids are these little circular DNAs um, that are essentially like a booster that bacteria can take up. Okay, so they've got their own bacteria. I mean, they've got their own DNA, their own um, circular DNA, uh, and that's where they get all their genes for everything they normally need. But they can occasionally take on these plasmids, which is like extra DNA. Okay, and sometimes it can give them benefits such as resistance from disease, okay, which we're going to be talking about. So what we see in this picture here, and we can see up here with our BAM H1 and our ECHO R1, that these are restriction enzymes. Okay, so that's the name of the restriction enzyme. So if you had a question saying, what is ECHO R1 made up of? You would know that it's protein because it's an enzyme. Okay. So we've got these restriction enzymes, and what they're going to do is essentially cut at these very particular base sequences. We can see it's AATTC and GATCC going backwards for BAMHI. Okay, and we can see that we get these sticky ends. So the sticky ends are cool because what that means is that we have to have those specific bases um, to match up to for anything to fit in there. Okay. Now, whilst I'm going through, I want to highlight what these orange and yellow sections are. Okay, both of them are antibiotics resistance um, genes. Okay, so if a bacteria has these genes, they won't die from either ampicillin or tetracycline, okay, which will become important in a bit. Now, what we find is that we cut this section out and using some reverse transcriptase and some DNA synthesis, we essentially are able to find this insulin A gene. Okay, because what's the point of this whole process? We want bacteria to make genes. Okay, we want them to make proteins based on genes that we give them. Okay, they can make them really quickly in huge amounts and they can make perfect human insulin. Okay, so we're going to basically task them to do it for us. So we've got this insulin A gene. I'm going to say insulin A because there are two genes, okay? So this whole process happens just twice, one with insulin A and one with insulin B. So it's something really important to remember. Okay, so we've used ECHO R1, we've used BAM H1 or HI, and they've essentially cut out insulin A from the reverse transcriptase, the DNA, the human DNA that we used. And also, they've cut out the same type of section from one of these plasmids, okay? And we can see here that it's actually been cut out. So what we're gonna do is mix these plasmids in with the insulin A sections, okay? And what we're gonna see is that sometimes our insulin A will go into the plasmid, fitting into the exact same slot that the last one did, okay? so these bases are complementary to those sticky ends and therefore it can fit in. If they weren't complementary, it wouldn't fit. Okay, so this makes a complete ring and we've got our endonucleases that have cut here. Now all we need is DNA ligase to come in and 
come and glue it together. Make sure that it stays as a ring. Okay, so we would get DNA ligase coming in, gluing those ends shut, and then we've got our new plasmid, our recombinant plasmid that's taken up the insulin A gene. Okay, hopefully you're following so far. Now, you can see Dachi there in the corner. Now, not all of these bacteria will take up a plasmid, and not all plasmids will take up the insulin A gene. Okay, we can see here that there are three options. Okay, this black oval represents a bacteria. Okay, so when we release these plasmids into um, an environment with bacteria, some of them take them up and some of them don't take them up. Okay, and we can increase the chances that bacteria take up these plasmids by doing something called heat shock. Okay, that's where we basically put them in an icy mixture and then put them in a hot mixture and that loosens up the cell membranes and allows things to come in more easily. And also electroporation. Okay, think about that word, poration, where building pores. Okay, like pores in your skin, holes in your skin. Electroporation is an electric shock that makes pores. Okay. What those two things do is they basically make holes in the bacteria that make it more likely for the plasmids to enter, okay? So in this scenario, we can see that both of these two plasmids have taken, both of these bacteria have taken up plasmids. Now, this one hasn't. Now, we can see that one of those bacteria has taken up a plasmid that just closed up back with its other section, its original section, and this other one that's actually taken up the insulin A gene. So that's our recombinant plasmid. That's the one that we want, okay? So now we can see why it's important for them to be antibiotic resistant, okay? Because what we want to take out is the chance that we have these on the agar plate, okay? So how we do that? We essentially put them onto an agar plate with ampicillin on it. Okay, so ampicillin is an antibiotic, which means that it kills bacteria. But these ones, because they took up a plasmid, have ampicillin resistance, so they will grow. Okay, so we see A, B, C, and D over here. A, B, C, and D. These are our colonies that have grown on the plate. Now you might be wondering, well, how do we know if it's got the recombinant plasmid or the normal plasmid, the uncombined one. Well, this is where it goes back to where we see tetracycline. Okay, so tetracycline is another antibiotic resistance gene. So we can see that in the normal situation, if it didn't take up insulin A gene, the tetracycline is, un, is uninterrupted. Okay, whereas we can see here that it's been interrupted by the insulin A gene. So this doesn't work. It's a non-functional tetracycline resistance. Okay, so what we would do is take whatever grows on this plate and simply put it onto a plate with tetracycline on it. This is why we've labeled the colonies A, B, C, and D, because now we know that if it grows on this plate, the tetracycline plate, it has tetracycline resistance, which means that it does not have insulin A, okay? So see here, it doesn't grow because it doesn't have the tetracycline working, okay? So as we can see in this picture down here, we know that C is the only one that took up the recombinant plasmid. So simply, we use that colony, okay? We ignore these ones and we use this colony instead. We know it's taken up a plasmid and we know it's taken up the right plasmid, okay? So, then, I know this is getting confusing, but then we essentially open it back up with Echo, okay? So we've got this similar idea as the original idea where we're going to be adding in this LAC-Z gene, okay? We see this called a LAC-Z gene. And this LAC-Z gene codes for this protein called beta-galactosidase, okay? We hear that. A's, A-S-E, galactosidase. That means it's an enzyme. So this is a protein, okay? It's a sequence that codes for a protein. 
Okay, so why do we want this? Well, in bacteria, if we lose, or if we have a un, small unfolded protein, which is what insulin A will become, it will get broken down really quick. Okay, there are these proteolytic enzymes, proteolytic, protein, lytic, breaks it down, breaks down proteins. We've got a proteolytic enzyme that's going to break down the protein, okay, the insulin A protein. So we need this beta galactosidase as our big protein that's folded up, that's a real protein with this insulin sort of coming off it. So it's like a protector, okay? So we cut open our recombined plasmid, okay? And same idea, we hope, we hope that this beta galactosidase is going to join in on the fun, okay? We hope it's going to become part of the plasmid again. Now, obviously, you'll see the issue that we've got from before. How do we know that beta galactosidase has been taken up? The LAC Z gene. How do we know that the LAC Z gene has been taken up? Well, it's pretty cool. Okay. So the same concept happens. Okay. We empty these plasmids back out with all of the bacteria, and there are another three combinations. Okay. Bacteria that did not take up the plasmid, we don't even want to think of those. Ones that took up the plasmid, but just insulin A, and that's not going to help us because remember that insulin A by itself is going to get broken down. So we want the plasmid with insulin A with lac -Z. Okay, We want the beta galactosidase. So what do we do here? Well, we put it back onto ampicillin. Why do we put it on ampicillin? Because remember that the bacteria that did not take up a plasmid, we don't want them on our plate, okay? And they will die in the presence of ampicillin. So that's why we don't want them. So essentially, we've got now these two that have laxed and no laxed. Now, the cool thing about laxed is that beta galactosidase, what it actually does is break down this thing called X-Gal, okay? It's this long name, but essentially when it breaks it down, it turns blue, okay? Which is really cool. So if we introduce lactose in the environment or X-Gal into the environment, it turns blue if it's got beta-galactosidase present. So now we see these blue colonies and we know that those have the beta-galactosidase. So essentially, again, we pick those ones out and use them. Now we're nearly there, we're nearly done. So we basically put these in bacteria, they undergo the transcription and translation. Now we make our black Z, our B-gal, plus it re removes the stop codon, okay, in that cutting. We've removed the stop codon, so the ribosome will keep moving down, and it adds this little insulin A protein onto the end of the big folded protein. Remember to protect it. We can see it just here that it's nice and protected. It's sort of off the end of it, nice and protected. Simply now, all we have to do is purify it. We have to get it off that beta galactosidase. And such a cool thing is that this little green dot, this little join here is met, the amino acid met. And met in this whole thing, oh, that was me, in this whole thing only occurs once. And that one spot that it occurs is here. Therefore, when we introduce cyanogen bromide, this chemical, it breaks the bonds where MET is, thus releasing this chain. How amazing is that? Then simply, once we've built this chain, the A and the B chain, we take them out of the bacteria and we put them together in a lab and they will naturally come together and form functional insulin. Okay, it is absolutely awesome, and hopefully this video helped you understand the process. And of course, if you need more assistance, please let me know. I've got a 15 minute limit on the video, hence why I sort of had to wrap it up very quick at the end. I've only got 15 seconds left, but hopefully this is helpful for you. Okay, have a great uh, rest of your weekend if you're watching this on the weekend, or if it's exam time, enjoy that. But otherwise, 
feel free to get in touch. That's another bio boost.